today's matchup is between Odin and Zoro. And Odin has been a deck that I've been fooling around with because it's the weaker of the two green decks to most people. But I think it's definitely a contender of being the best green deck possible. Now, on paper, um, it doesn't look like it because um, Kid is just able to swing twice, which is a really good effect. But untapping two Don can be backbreaking as well. Now, red as far as Zoro, as you guys seen, we've had Zoro on the channel before. Um, but this is a different pilot. This is my guy Nick over here playing uh, Zoro, but my boy Davion is playing Odin. And me and him have been talking about it, and we think that it can be a very, very good leader. Um, definitely been seeing a lot of Odin play a lot lately. Um, and if you are a part of the Stage Zero circuit, you saw me playing it on there. So. Uh, that was pretty cool, um, but we're working on this list, trying to get it right and seeing if we can make it the best green deck possible. Um, we are practicing for treasure cups, you know. Um, if you guys are going, hopefully you guys do well, and you know maybe you become king of the pirates. But we have Odin here going first, um, and Zoro going second. Looks like Zoro's gonna play something here, and he's tapping two for this brook. He wants to establish board presence, which is very, very good because being able to put that Dawn under the leader to give everything 1,000 power is going to be really uh, big for him and being able to just poke at life. You know what I'm saying? But if you guys are new here, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, share the video um, with your friends, and let's get to 500 subs so we can get this giveaway going. I'm trying to get to 1,000 by summer. So that is the big, big goal that I'm looking to achieve. Um, we have Zoro going now playing this Nami and this Nami is going to generate value from as long as it's on the board because anytime he plays something he's going to go ahead and be able to use a rested Don to put on the leader. Uh, we punk Gibson out of it resting the brook and then we just slam uh, this Zoro down and swing it for six and Odin takes it. So now we're going to the Odin's turn and we're at five Don here um, and we have to see what we're going to play. So in hand we have a drop kid, we have a paradise waterfall, um, looks like we put two Don and swing seven at Zoro, taking care of board present, makes sense. We have a Yamato in hand and looks like a couple, um, nope, three um, Scratch Man and Pooh's in hand too, so he has a lot of combo power. I wonder what he's going to play here. Um, looks like he's going to establish board presence as well, tapping two, playing the Scratch Man. That is a um, play you don't see very often, so he's forcing the red player to tap out because that Scratch Man and Pooh is going to be able to tap down Dawn on swing with the Dawn under it. So now we're going to the Zoro player, immediately pushes up five, and looks like he's going to windmill slam this Luffy. So Luffy comes down, puts the rest of Dawn on the leader, um, making the Luffy a 7k, so this is a 5-7, swinging with Rush. Um, he's just going to eat that, unless he wants to dump him, so we go down to three life, and now we're going to see if we can apply pressure. Alright, we're going to do this uh, winnie poke is what I call it. Because this Brook's a 5k, we're swinging 5 at the leader, and looks like we're thinking about out comboing this. Uh, Zoro has 5 in hand, and Odin's player is uh, hand is pretty decent. So we're thinking about Paradise Waterfalling, but we won't get too much of an advantage out of that. This Yamato is not going to come in play, so we're just going to combo that out. Now we're on taking the life from 6 um, from the Zoro leader, and we pass turn. All right, so now this is where the Odin player can uh, establish board here because we have this card called Kinemon, and Kinemon is a six, a six Don play, but it allows you to play a three cost or less. And I believe uh, that's what he's going to do here because he might have one in hand, but I'm not sure if he does or not. But he's going to put one Don underneath a Poo, and he's going to try to tap me down, but he didn't realize a Poo taps down Don and not characters. He thought it was like the Kiku, but it's not. So we just swing at the Brook. Brook dies. Um, then we're going to go ahead and tap six, looks like. Boom. There it is. There's Kinemon and playing the Okiku. So six Dawn play for uh, nine Dawn worth of cards. It's kind of broken, which is why we really do like Kinemon. Because Kinemon is going to also restand any three drop or less. We go ahead and use Leader's Effect to pitch two. And now we swing eight at the Luffy. Now see, that's what I'm talking about. Being able to untap two Don and force him now to use cards out of hand. He just dropped two two Ks to save this Luffy. So now we're going to um, establish a board and force him to see if he has an answer. 
But since we're at two life, he is just gonna go ahead and play another rusher, which is this Sanji. Sanji's gonna come down. Um, if he gets two down underneath it, it gains rush, and it does. And 2,000 power, so this is a five. With that two, now it's a seven. So seven to face. Oh my gosh. All right, the seven is the magic number. If you guys don't know, in this game, you always wanna swing odds to odds and evens to evens. All right, so being able to swing seven is gonna require two cards out of his hand. He just goes ahead and takes it. Um, now we're gonna swing seven again with this Luffy. So if he took the first seven, force you to combo. He out combos, goes to eight, swings five with the Nami. Um, we out combo, go to six, swing six and goes to seven, plays the chopper. Now this chopper's not gonna do anything. Um, he's down to two cards in the hand and there's an Akiku on board. So, he didn't have Jet Pistol, which doesn't help him because that Akiku is going to apply a lot of pressure. But as the Odin player, we need to go ahead and clear this board. Um, I'm hoping that's what he does. Now, I haven't watched this match. Uh, they told me this was a really good match between the two of them. So I wanted to see what happened. So this is raw commentating for you guys. So in hand, um, looks like we have a Momo, Paradise Waterfall, and 8-Drop Kit. So, I believe we're at 9 Dawn now. Um, so, we're trying to see what is the next play here. So, we're going to go ahead and do 2 under Okiku. Now, we do get Okiku's ability. We swing the 7 at the Luffy and rest in the blocker. Luffy's out of there. Now, we have the Kinemon swing. So, we need to attach a Dawn to, to Kinemon. And if we attach this Dawn to Kinemon, this Okiku is going to be able to restand. So, theoretically, Theoretically, this Kinemon is gonna act as a Basil Hawkins, but he didn't attach the Don and he untapped Okiku, so I don't know if he forgot to put the Don on there, so I'm not sure um, what happened there, but he uh, swings here, looks like it wasn't caught, so we're gonna see if this Don is gonna affect the gameplay and the outcome of this game. So. Um, we go ahead and play the Momo and tap the Momo and we're going to go ahead and add a card to hand. And we only have one in hand, so now we're adding, is it, was that Dendro? Um, we're at five Don available. Um, looks at hand. Uh, let's Dendro back and we're grabbing a, is that an Ezo? Ezo would be the, yeah, grabs the Ezo. All right. So we got the Ezo. We need some combo power just in case he tries to clear our board. And. We have an eight drop kid. So now we have to determine what's the next play. He is thinking about swinging seven here. So we're just gonna swing seven and Zoro's gonna eat it. So Zoro is going into 10 Don and can do a lot here depending on what's in hand. We draw for turn, um, Odin has a board and it went from board presence to board presence. Can Whoa, didn't see that coming. Swinging 15 a leader. He is trying to go for the kill next turn. All right, and he just passes turn. That's an easy turn there. We at four cards in hand, and Odin has a board. So Odin is presenting lethal here, um, cause I think he is at three life or two life looks like. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and Momo first. Um, look at cards, snaps another Ezo. Oh my God. So he's just, all right, we know a 4K in his hand if we're the Zoro player. So we got another Ezo, and then we're gonna go ahead and tap, is this eight? He's tapping eight for kids. See, now, I don't know if I would have snapped this and tapped the eight um, right away, but he is at one life. I mean, no life. So this does help generate um, a blocker as well as the Zoro player having to swing at this kid. So it buys him some time. Um, so we're going to see what happens. So now we're going to go ahead and poke here. Um, swinging five. Do we out combo this? Uh, we're at three life. Let's think about it. Counting, looking at card, thinking about swinging. Might have a trigger. I wonder what the trigger could be. Um, thinking about it, looks like we have a Nico Robin in hand. I think that was a VV, a Diablo Jambe, and I can't tell what the other card was. Um, but this has got to be a jet pistol, right? It's the only thing you would be thinking about because if you don't have the jet pistol here, you're going to take another six from the uh, Odin player and that Kinemon's gonna swing for six. So do we just snap this jet pistol and kill this car? Or do we kill the blocker if it is a jet pistol? Because you do have um, 
a drop kid but i don't think he's going to be worried about the blocker because he does have the diablo jambe in hand um we did see that so this is going to be a very thought out turn here it looks like he is thinking hard and yep it looks like he just goes ahead and jet pistols the kinemon which helps him uh survive another hit but we still have leader swing and we're just gonna swing for five combos the vv goes to six all right so now we're down to three cards in hand ten dawn and now we have to figure out something oh four cards in hand is that two diablo drama yeah that is so uh leaders unblockable we're at two life and now we have to kill this kid now he does know 4k um combo power because he added two ezos to hand with the momo and this is what makes green good it has momo and bonnies those cards just being able to generate card after card after card after card uh, per turn is crazy wow he snaps 14 at the kid and he's like you want to keep kid give me your hand or let it die Kid has definitely done his job, so Kid is gone. Now we have Okiku, Momo, and a Beige, and a Leader Swing. Um, so we're at two life. Uh, can we end this game here? I don't know if he's gonna go for the kill or not, but he's just gonna tap and use his Momo. One Don for one card, I'll take it. It's a draw one. The longer this Momo stays on the field, the more it's gonna generate. So we check hand, look at hand, and we're going to add. Seems like we've seen another Kinemon, a Beige we can't get. Ooh, another Ezo. I think he's gonna add this Ezo. I mean, I would because of the simple fact that I have zero life and only have one blocker right now. So can't get Log, could get Paradise, but we're gonna just go ahead and grab Ezo. So Ezo's good. Oh, and that's three Ezos in hand. This man is cracked. He's got three. He's literally searched every Ezo he's had off the momo and we do have another momo in hand so it's very well he can play it here and he does he taps it immediately and goes to top five and we're looking to see what else we can add maybe we get something that can rest i mean Ezo can rest wow speaking of Ezo, he has all four Ezos off these two momos that's insane this man is drawing cracked right now so we're gonna go ahead and attach don to okiku and swing eight um, so the eight goes to hand and the card goes to hand and looks like we're down to one. We swing eight again, leaving one up for the paradise waterfall. And we know we have eight K in hand because this man literally just added four easels off these momos. No matter what math you do, I think you can't get through here as a Zoro player because he can go swing, it'll get blocked, but he does have the Diablo Jambe, so he can use the Diablo Jambe um, and stop him from blocking. But then at that point, it's just like, you still got Okiku, you got the blocker, you got two Momos. You can just go 5-5 five, five and just poke and poke at his hand and just, just kill him that way. But, I mean, there may not be a need here because Zoro doesn't have that big of a hand, but I think he's just trying to think it through, trying to figure out what the best play is. Because if he swings at Okiku, he's gonna block it. And Okiku's gonna live. And if he doesn't establish anything, it's it's not gonna do anything. Uh boom. So Diablo Jambe, and we go 14 face, and he's like, show me the combo power. Do you have it? We know we have 8k in hand. The question is, does he have the Paradise Waterfall? And he does because he left one down up. He shows him the hand and he's like, I got 16, um, you only got to 14, so I just had to get to 15, but he drops 16 worth of combo power. Um, I think uh, him dropping the 16 is the right thing to do. I mean, you only needed 15. So, oh, he tells him he can add it back. So that was cool enough. You know, we're at locals, so definitely at your locals, you don't have to be a rule shark all the time, but you do want to play flawlessly. Um, so goes ahead and puts... 10 down on the Kiko and swings free game and he's just like show it to me and that was that if you guys like that battle um definitely put it in the comments let me know what you think let me know if you want me to get a deck profile on any of this too or if there's something in particular of one piece you want me to play um i do look forward to bringing more content to you guys and remember if anybody got a problem with you tell them to kiss your ass because that's what i do peace love happiness gone